Hello guys and welcome back to another uh, Macho Luco Missing People channel video. Thank you so much for taking some time to join me today as we discuss the uh, heartbreaking case of 21 year old Josh Shastak of Albany, New York who went missing on December 22nd, 2007. Josh was a popular DJ at a student uh, ran radio station in uh, Plattsburgh, New York, WQKE. Uh, Josh was a student at Plattsburgh State, but he did transfer to Hudson Valley Community College in Troy, stating he would be back later on. On the 21st of December, Josh called his dad and told him he was going to have a good time with his friends at a downtown Albany bar. Josh's dad, Bill, was in close contact with his son, and being an arson investigator, he would not simply accept the official explanation from the authorities on this case, as you will later see. On the night of December 22nd, 2007, Josh drove to Albany and parked his car at the Elbow Room at 170 Delaware Avenue. He met his friends and they proceeded to the Bayou Cafe at 79 Pearl Street. As they finished up, uh, Josh told his buddies that he was going into the restroom. Uh, and this ended up being the point of separation. Roughly 45 minutes went by with Josh failing to return and failing to respond to many texts and calls that his friends were making. Uh, so his friends checked the bathroom, but to no avail. Um, at exactly 12.10 a.m., as you can see, on December 23rd, 2007, Josh is seen on surveillance camera outside the, the cafe uh, using his cell phone. Very unusual. This was not the last time he was seen alive. He was observed on other surveillance cameras on uh, North Pearl and also State Street, minutes after he left the Bayou Cafe. This was in the opposite direction of where he was parked. The same night, Josh disappeared. A Department of Conservation vehicle was left damaged and abandoned at uh, the Port of Albany. The connection with Josh is that his cell phone was found just a few feet away from the damaged vehicle. As a result of this evidence, Josh was originally a suspect in the theft and damage case of the vehicle. However, this was soon recanted as there was no other evidence linking Josh to the vehicle damage. I do wonder how carefully this vehicle was actually checked because the culprit may have left some other clue or piece of evidence inside or near the vehicle, right? The entire downtown area was scarred for Josh, and a thorough search was conducted around Port Albany, including divers in the Hudson River. The fruitless search was ter terminated on January 10th, 2008. So there were no more developments in this case until April of 2008, when a body was found in the Hudson River in Coxsackie, New York. It was that of Josh. His keys and cash were still on his body. The coroner determined the cause of death was accidental drowning. Now, that, I hope that sounds familiar to you guys because that seems to be the default explanation of, by most pathologists, right? But I'm not buying it. And neither does uh, Bill uh, Shostak, uh, guys, so much so that he hired a separate pathologist to conduct another autopsy. However, the second pathologist, Dr. Baden, could not figure out just how Josh got in the water. There were no injuries or marks or bruises consistent with a fall, struggle, or a long journey down the river. In other words, another expert in this area saying that the physical evidence points to the body being gently uh, placed in the water and not and, and more, more, more than likely a lot later than uh, on the day when the missing went missing right so again consistencies with the um, Jelani Branson case with um with many other cases of this kind guys where we have allegedly an accidental drowning but even if let's say that was the case the pathologist would 
would be looking for some kind of um, twisted ankle, broken broken wrist, something that would imply that the body was tumbling down an embankment or a cliff into a, the body of water based on some trip or accidental push or, or misstep, right? And they never see any of that. You know, again, one or two maybe, but if you are looking at hundreds of these cases from different areas, that's very suspicious, right? Well, I don't believe Josh just wandered into the Hudson River, guys, and neither does his, uh, his dad. So um, what do you think happened to Josh? What do you think happened to him after that weird point of separation where one minute he was there with his friends and just excused himself to go to the bathroom, and then um, even though he's being seen using his phone minutes later outside the, the cafe, uh, his friends and uh, have been on record saying they didn't get anything back from him. Very weird, right? Leave your comments down below, guys, and thank you for looking at this case with me. My heart goes out to uh, uh, Bill Shostak. Um, I, I saw the interview he did uh, in 2014 about this case. He was still very heartbroken about it, obviously. I do appreciate uh, him looking into the smiley face murder theory proposed by Gannon and Gilbertson. I have my own take on this. I'm going to make a separate video on that. But um, Gannon and Gilbertson did, did a fantastic job of am amassing the evidence for those in those um, uh, cases that they featured in uh, drown drowning uh, case forensics. Uh, there were 17 cases that were very thoroughly presented. Um, they did a masterful job at, at the details of, of uh, the analysis of the evidence. And even though I don't necessarily agree with this theory that there's a group of sophisticated killers that, that are responsible for some of these murders, or assuming murders, right? We don't even know uh, technically what is happening to these people. Uh, but the reason I, I disagree personally is because um, this would be the highest efficiency and success rate of any criminal uh, group or individual, right? Spread across multiple cities and um, with multiple CCTV cameras multiple eyewitnesses, urban centers, and uh, nobody is that good, right? That's my point. So I realized it was also a dead end for Bill uh, in this case, but uh, I do appreciate the work Mr. Gannon and Gilbertson have put into uh, the the effort they really did uh, put into the, these cases, and I've learned a tremendous amount from reading about them. And of course, Johnny Brinson was one of them. So thank you again for watching and look, uh, I'm looking forward to sharing some more of these cases with you and yeah, post below and let's get more, more um, opinions and analyses out there on these cases. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day guys.